already incredibly popular. Um, when I say, and I've known Jay and his team, you know, for many, many years, and they're amazing. You have to bring in like the master, master designers to create something like this. No. And really unique stones on top of it. And you, I mean, anybody, if you're looking at me wearing this, I'm looking at Julia, I'm looking at you wearing this, there's a story behind this. And I wanna know where, it is absolutely beautiful. Where did you, who made that for you? First off, this is something that can't be, you know, mass created. There's, it's just impossible. It has to be done 100% by hand. So you have orange and red spiny oyster and this unique, I don't, I've never seen the inlay like this before, Jay. This is actually the first time we've done this. And this is a spiny oyster. I love it. And spiny oyster, and I go back as far as even college. <laughs> so this is a material, when I said the, the very first material that I started working with, of course, where I grew up in, this, in the Southwest in New Mexico, I grew up around turquoise and uh, a lot of Navi Native American uh, silversmiths and designers and stonecutters. That was, you know, kind of how I got immersed in it. Um, in college, we used, to go, we used to go diving. We used to go down to the uh, Sea of Cortez, which is, you know, in the Baja Peninsula, right? We used to go to Wymas and San Carlos. So anybody, anybody who's ever done anything on the, on the west coast of Mexico knows where Wymas and San Carlos are. They're, they're real... Um, back, back in the day, of course, my hair was much, much longer. <laughs> it was black, much, much longer. Um, I had a beard, and we would, we would hop in there. There were four of us, and we'd hop in this Volkswagen van, and we would take all of our dive gear, and we would go down to Mexico, and we would camp on the beach. And when we would camp on the beach, back then, you could camp on the beach. Now, in this same area, there's no way. You couldn't, you couldn't ever, you couldn't even do that. But we used to go there, and we wouldn't take anything. And when I say nothing, the only thing that we would have was a cooler of beer, and that was it, <laughs> and uh, for food. And we had our spear guns, and what we would do is we would dive. And we were down there just to kind of play with the seals. It's just amazing. I mean, the wildlife and everything. Um, th there's not really reefs uh, to really speak of, like, coral reefs, but, it, it, but there's a lot of wildlife and a lot of game fish and a lot of fish. And we would actually fish, gather shrimp, trade for shrimp, all kinds of things trade. One of the things that we found though, like on the beach at that time, and I, I have flashbacks, every time I use this material, I have flashbacks of some of the stuff that happened to us. But we, we would, there would be piles of spiny oyster. And this comes in three colors. It comes in red, it comes in orange, and it comes in purple. But very, very little, uh, the purple's like f less than 5%. But there would be these huge piles on the beach of just the shells because the, the natives at that time, uh, the locals, they were diving for the oyster and just for the meat and the oyster. And the, yeah. it's just delicious. I mean, it's a, it's a really delicious oyster and they're really kind of big. It's, like a, it's not like a, like a cherry stone or something. It's a really nice sized oyster. And so they just had no use for the shells. And so they're leaving. So us being kind of what we were, we, we weren't really hippies, we were more cosmic cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I describe it. I, like I was kind of a cosmic cowboy. I okay. can see that, Jay. Um, so we, um, we would take the shell back and we would just load it up, it was free. So we would just load the van, I mean just stacked to the gills with anything we could find, gunny sacks, cardboard boxes, anything of this shell. And we'd take it back and we would incorporate it into our designs because we were making uh, turquoise necklaces and, um, and we started cutting up the spiny oyster because of the color and using it. And over the years, when we would, uh, over a period of two years, we would go down there thinking, okay, we're gonna go dive and then you know, now we get the shell, we're gonna you know, like, you know, we're bring more shell back. All of a sudden, nothing, zero. It was all gone. And the reason is then finally somebody figured out, hey, you can make this into jewelry. So that's how I'm talking like going back into the early 70s. Early 70s is when this was really kind of discovered. And we were some of the first people, I'm not saying we were the very first people, but I don't know of anybody else that was, was doing it at it. that time, and, but we started making it. Well, you said it's very sharp too, oh, right? Oh God, like you know, you here's the thing, I didn't bring it. I, you know, the last time I was, not the, the time before I was on, I brought, because we had spiny oysters. Yeah, yeah. And remember. so I thought, you know what? I'm gonna actually bring, cause I bring the polished shells to show everybody. But the last time I came on, uh, the, you know, the last event that we did, the big event, 
I brought on, actually, with the spines on it, I drew blood five times on my own personal Just side. Just by handling it back Just and forth. In, I yeah. was being careful with it, and I drew, when they, call, when they say spiny, they mean spiny. You cannot, this material is so, so controlled right now. That's it's what I was going to ask you. It's not like the yeah. day is years ago where well, it was on the beach. Number one, if you're trying to bring a, a, a van full of spiny oyster across the, uh, the border right now, are, you know, if they, if you, you know, you'd probably, well, you'd actually go to jail. I mean, number one, you, you know, you have to have the permits to even possess it. And also fish and wildlife, they wouldn't let you bring it in. I mean, you would, you would have to have all the official documents. Here's the thing with the spiny oyster. Now, the spiny oyster now is highly controlled. It's in the Sea of Cortez. You know, and, and um, the only way that you can actually still die for it, there's about a dozen families that are still grandfathered in to actually harvest the oyster. There are seasons on it now. There's only two seasons where they'll let you actually harvest it. And, you know, you really don't want to get caught with this in your dive bag, um, any form of it without a permit. It's not, it's just like, it'd be like going to a coral reef and breaking off coral mm. and, you know, just bringing it home with you. Nah. It'd be the same thing. Right. I mean, it's actually, uh, would you be in the United States, you'd be committing a felony. Mm. So uh, th there's not a lot of this material. I still, it's what's really amazing. Some of the original resources, like I said, there's about 12 families. The original resources on this are still the same, same people, the same families that we're able to obtain no material kidding. from. Yeah, so this is a really unusual, and this features the orange and the red. It is so cool. I want to, I want to get some behind me. I, I can't. I, I keep thinking this because I love these colors. It's fall fashion. We've been doing introducing fall fashion throughout the last couple of weeks, and they're the most perfect leaves back here. They're little. You know, obviously not real leaves, but um, I want to put them uh, behind here because this has been all the colors that we've been talking about in all of our, even with you know our today's special from Diane Gilman, all those rich burgundies that you're seeing, all those camel colors, all those rich you know merlots. This necklace is made for that. It's like the perfect, perfect neutral necklace to basically wear. I'm wearing um, like almost a, a plummy color, right? But you see how it's bringing out some of the purples in there. You don't wear this necklace and not expect a million compliments. It is $50 off. It is the best price, the lowest price we have ever offered this for. We are counting backwards at this point for less than $40. We'll ship this right to your front home, for your front door or delivery direct, however you like. And if you're new to J. Kings, I know we're welcoming so many first time shoppers. Welcome. If you're starting right here, Oh my goodness, are you in for a treat? This is like what it's truly all about. We say they're little treasures, they're work of art, everything's handcrafted. You will never see anything quite like this unless you're shopping buying finds, but certainly not even, you know, again, at this sale price. I know our clock has expired. Uh, we're gonna keep you updated. It's 18 and a quarter inches, has a three and, I'm sorry, two and three quarter inch extender. Can I, can you just go real quickly? Can I get those leaves? I wanna show the leaves. I don't know why this is in my head. I have to do it. Okay, wait, yeah, we'll go back to Julia. Hang on, let me get my leaves. <laughs> why do I do this stuff, Jay? But I, I, I get so easily distracted. distracted. I know, shocking, right? But look, I know. I love fall. See, and Julia's got to turn around, so which is good. Actually, so you Julia. Should, you could actually wear it reversibly. Yeah, look. It's actually made for that. I'm gonna be my right. own display artist. Oh my God. How good am I? <laughs> See what I'm saying now? I was like looking at those colors and I'm like, oh, that necklace is gonna go perfectly with that. All those rich auburns and rich gold, oh, you're gonna love that. 844-549 is the item number. And uh, we also offer free exchanges. So if you get a wrong size or color choice, uh, no problem. 